So thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, my name is Brandon Grant. I'm the marketing director here at QuoteWorks. Uh, today we're going to be demonstrating a um, demonstrating QuoteWorks uh, in a just kind of like short fashion, just kind of give you the major overview, some of the major functionality that's available. Um, and we'll have just kind of a simple PowerPoint presentation, not a lot of slides, just a, a short one, just so we can kind of describe what QuoteWorks is used for and how it can be used in your company. Uh, kind of like a workflow diagram so it can help kind of visualize how to use the software uh, and then like i said we'll go over a short demonstration of the features and functionality we'll actually create a quote from start to finish uh, so everyone can kind of see how that works as we're going through things if you do have questions there is a questions box in the go to meeting window uh, so feel free to post your questions in there uh, if i don't get your question immediately don't worry at the end of the meeting i will go through the questions uh, so if you want to stick around for the end and post questions at the end, you can do that as well, or simply just add them as we're going through things today. So uh, what is QuoteWorks? QuoteWorks is a sales quoting and proposal solution. And what this means is that we help automate the sales process by helping to streamline the creation process of creating a sales quote or proposal for your customers. Uh, we have a ton of integrations. We integrate with about 13 different CRMs and PSA systems. Uh, we integrate with the leading IT distributors like Tech Data, Ingram Micro, Synex, DNH. Uh, we integrate with QuickBooks, with Sage 50 US Edition. Uh, you can even place orders through QuoteWorks. So we have a lot of integrations. Um, it's where a lot of the power uh, from QuoteWorks comes. Um, we're also able to do more than just quotes. So yeah, we can do simple quotes, but we can do multiple page proposals as well. Uh, we also have an online delivery system called Quote Valet. So you can actually track customer interactions with your documents. The customer can electronically sign and accept. Uh, they can even be brought to a payment screen to make payment on the document as well. Who uses QuoteWorks? Uh, really anyone that is creating documents in QuoteWorks or anywhere that has line items, uh, you'll be able to use QuoteWorks. Uh, we're a line item system. Uh, so if you can, or you are creating quotes or proposals with line item information, and then we can do that. We also have the ability to attach additional documentation. So if you need to include more content, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, we do have a lot of MSPs, a lot of VARs. Uh, we do have a lot of other industries supported as well. So we are uh, very popular in the IT industry, AV, security, uh, and quite a few other industries also. Uh, we do support recurring revenue, so if you do quote out uh, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual items, or uh, even um, like hardware as a service, not just services themselves, uh, we can do that as well. So there's a lot of flexibility with the software. So this is kind of the default workflow and a lot of the functionality that comes with QuoteWorks, uh, where we're basically creating documents, integrating with systems, and uh, seamlessly flowing the information to those other systems, delivering the documents to the customers. We can then track the customer interactions um, and make updates. And then once it's been approved, place orders through QuoteWorks and then even report on that information. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there's a lot of functionality and points to each of these kind of um, integration options uh, where we're creating these documents and then we're able to send that information directly over to these systems uh, in a um, seamless fashion where everything kind of happens on the save. Uh, the delivery of the document is going to be involved with what the output of the document, which is going to be fully customizable, and then being able to track that information to the order, and then uh, even being able to run reports on that information in QuoteWorks. Uh, so there's a little, just a lot of functionality that's available, uh, and we'll go through a lot of those major points today too. Uh, some of the key features, um, obviously the big one for a lot of people is going to be the seamless PSA and CRM integrations, how this information is going to go over from QuoteWorks to your CRM or your PSA. So if you're using Autotask or ConnectWise or Salesforce or uh, really any of the other 12 CRMs that we support, um, it's going to be important to, for that information to be carried over into those um, systems without you having to manually type that information in. Uh, the distributor real-time pricing availability with Edelize, uh, so you're not having to import price files from the distributors and you're getting your pricing and availability information. Same thing with being able to support the recurring revenue. Uh, a lot of items are paid monthly now and so it's, be, it's important to be able to quote that out properly so the customer can see what the breakdown is going to be uh, when they're purchasing uh, from you. Uh, some of the other functionality that we have available uh, is going to include like a leasing integration. So if any of you work with Great America or really any other leasing provider, we do have integrations available for that. Uh, and then also being able to um, actually track 
uh, the order through the delivery um, with the IT distributors where you can actually get like order status updates and things of that nature. So um, the way QuiltWorks works is it's built on kind of a core product with a few add-ons available. So the core product is QuiltWorks itself. And then there is the real-time module and Edelize, which work hand in hand to provide that pricing and availability from the distributors. Uh, and then we have Quilt Valley, which will be the electronic delivery for QuiltWorks, where you can send those electronic documents. Um, and then there is a web add-on available as well. So if you are looking for more of an online option, uh, we do have QuiltWorks web available too. Uh, these are all the distributors we currently support. Um, most of these are going to be U.S. and Canadian. Uh, there are some U.K. options in here as well. Uh, but for the most part, like Ingram Micro, Tech Data, Synex, and DNH, those are kind of the big ones. Um, Comstore um, is available as well. Uh, and then uh, like Jenny and ScanSource and Bell Micro and Blue Star, things like that. So uh, we have quite a few distributors that we have integrations with and that we support in our software. Okay. So the workflow. So we're actually creating a document uh, in QuiltWorks. It's going to be pretty straightforward, and this is the workflow we're actually going to demonstrate here in just a few minutes. Um, you basically start off by selecting your contact. You then select your products and services. So you essentially build the base or the body of the document. We then make our adjustments and we save it, which will then prompt us to create the, our opportunity and our schedule our follow-ups in our CRM or PSA system. At this point, it's also going to transfer that data over to that, those systems, whichever ones you're integrated with. Uh, we will then move to delivering the document to the customer. The customer can then electronically accept and even make payment on the document. And we'll then update that opportunity as one. Uh, on the other side, if the customer decides not to move forward with it, we can also update it as lost or closed, essentially, that uh, they're not going to move forward with it. And then we'll be able to check vendor sourcing pricing before we actually place the online order. And then from the order, we'll be able to create a purchase order in like QuickBooks or Sage 50. Uh, if you use Autotask or ConnectWise, we can also create the PO in Autotask and ConnectWise as well. Um, and then from there, you'll, you'll be able to actually track the order to delivery so you can actually see when the document or when the item is delivered uh, from those specific distributors. So we do have a ton of resources on the website. Uh, so if you want to kind of peruse our support section, we have videos, uh, we'll go through a lot of the functionality. Uh, our help files, our user manual for QuiltWorks, this has all the functionality available in QuiltWorks. Um, we do have a lot of uh, the previous webinars recorded, uh, so those are available, and obviously we do live webinars too. Uh, and then there is a forum, which is a great place to interact with other QuiltWorks users, see how other users are uh, using the software. Um, and then we do have partners available as well. So if you're in a location, um, maybe not in the U.S. or in uh, even in North America, and you're looking for someone a little more local, we do have options for um, partners that, uh, that are all over the world. Uh, and then we are always available by email and phone support. So if you do have questions from need assistance, feel free to give us a call, send us an email. You know, we're always happy to help. If you haven't downloaded the trial, I um, highly recommend you give it a shot. Uh, it's a free, full functioning 30-day trial. Uh, it includes all the integrations. So if you're using any of these CRMs or PSAs that we integrate with, you can definitely test out those integrations. Uh, the distributor integrations are supported as well. Uh, and we do offer free support. So if you need help um, getting something set up or just have general questions, we'd be happy to answer those for you as well. Uh, we do offer uh, live personal demonstrations. So if after today, you're looking for something a little more um, intimate and something that's closer to what how your company is run uh, definitely let us know it's something that we can schedule with you and uh, have one of our product specialists jump on a, a, a demo with you and kind of walk you through the process of uh, using the software okay so let's go ahead and get into actually creating a document in QuiltWorks for the first time so uh, what you see on my screen here this actually is the main interface for QuiltWorks and what we're going to do is walk through the process of creating a new document. So typically, when you start a new document, you're going to start with a blank document. Now, we do have exceptions to that. We do support document templates. So if you have products and services that you sell on a regular basis, instead of having to have your users start or even yourself start with a blank document, you can actually start with a template that already has line items in it where you just need to make some modifications before you move forward. Uh, for our example today, we'll just go ahead and we'll start with a blank document. Uh, line item information will always be on your document items tab, so that's why we always have it first. The sold to, ship to tab will be the customer contact information. If you're integrated with one of the CRMs or PSAs that we support, we'll be able to actually search in real time for the contact information. 
You can search by pretty much anything, uh, but if you click on the magnifying glass on this window, this will let you search by and then show the, the options. In this case, I'm using QuoteWorks as my contact manager where I, have, I can search by the company, last name, phone, email, or account number. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and select John here and then pull him into my sold to. So you can see it's an immediate read and we pull that information directly into the sold to contact fields. If you need to mark this person as a sold to and then, but you're actually gonna ship the information or the products and services to another location, you can actually select a different contact. You could even select a different company if you wanted to. Uh, it's however you want to use this functionality. Really the only thing that's important to remember here is that the sold to is sort of like the default field. This is the contact information we're gonna put on the document in QuoteWorks. So you always wanna make sure you fill that out with who's going to be receiving the quote from you. So we're just gonna go ahead and select, um, actually let's go select John here for all of them. And then on the sale info tab, this will have your document specific information such as like the document date, the expiration date, the sales rep that's in charge of the document or who has ownership of the document. We also have a prepared by field, which is essentially like a secondary sales rep. So if um, you have someone who creates quotes on your rep's behalf, uh, they would essentially be the prepared by and the sales rep would be the primary or the contact information on that document. We also have fields for like contract dates where you can set the tax rate and some custom fields if you need to include some additional information. On the notes tab, uh, we have five different notes fields. We have the introduction and closing on the left-hand side. These are typically notes you would want the customer to see. So just have some generic information there about uh, if they have any questions to let me know. And then we have some internal notes on the right-hand side and also some dynamic notes. The dynamic notes are a great place if you are creating documents with other users where you can leave notes for each other about changes you've made or changes that need to be made. You can even put a date and time stamp. So it'll have your username and then a date and time stamp when you click on this little icon anytime you add those notes. So that's a nice little uh, feature there. Uh, and then custom tab, this is for any type of custom information that you need. So if you need to include any additional custom information, you can do that. And then the links tab, this is where we can attach additional documentation. So if you have like a statement of work, the zero CAD join, Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint presentation, really any type of document you want to include with this quota proposal, we can attach it here. If you click on the drop down here, you can actually see a list of existing templates. So if you do have like a statement of work template that you want to attach, we can attach it here. We can even fill in information based on this document. So if you have like macros in there for like the company name, dates, and um, maybe a set contract range and things like that, we can actually pre-fill a lot of that information for you by utilizing those macros. Okay, so we have our contacts. So let's go back to our document items tab and let's start building our document. We're gonna do a pretty straightforward document here. Uh, one of the things that's really nice in QuoteWorks is we have the ability to organize our document into different sections using what we call section headers. So if I right click, you'll see there's an option here that says insert section header and then I can put in a section header description. So what do I wanna call this section header? In our example, I'm just gonna call it products. Okay, and you'll see I have my product section header now. And I'm gonna right click again, choose insert section header again, and I'm gonna do a section for services. And we're gonna do one more, and we'll do it for optional items. This is optional, you don't have to use this, but it is helpful because it not only allows the customer to see kind of what's gonna be maybe like one-time items or recurring items, um, but you can also choose how it's going to appear um, on the document by doing it this way. This will also make it easier on the sales rep too when you start adding items to the document, you can actually choose where you want these items to appear. So we, we have our section header, so let's go ahead and start adding some items to our document. Uh, the first thing we're going to demonstrate is our integration with the IT distributor. So like if you're using tech data, Ingram Micro, Synex, DNH, you can click on Eatalyze here, and then you'll see there's a search for box. Search for box will let you search for any items that are sold by those distributors, and it's basically a Google search. So for instance, if I type in trip light switch, that's a pretty generic search term, and it's going to return back, in this case, 616 different items. What I can do from here though, is utilize these categories, manufacturers and features and attributes to kind of narrow down my search results. So for instance, if I know I want a trip light switch and it's a switch box, I can click on the switch box category and that'll narrow it down to 132 items. From there, I can actually go down to, let's do a product family. And you can see here, this will narrow it down even further. So if I select net commander, 
that'll narrow it down to 11 items. So that makes it very easy and very quickly you can narrow down your search results. Then to get pricing and availability on one of these items, once you have an item highlighted, simply click on the get pricing and availability icon here, the little lightning bolt. And that'll actually go out to all four distributors that you've set up in Quoteworks and show you your pricing and it'll show you the availability in parentheses here and broken down by the warehouse on the right hand side. So if I wanted to source this item from DNH, simply select DNH, double click on it, that'll bring up my add item assistant. The add item assistant will let me make some minor adjustments to this item, such as I can change the quantity using the up and down arrow. I could also just type it in. I can adjust my price. Right now I have it set up as a default of markup of 10%. Maybe I want a profit of 10%. So what I'll do is I'll do P10. That would give me a 10% profit. Or maybe I'm going to mark it up 30%. Maybe I just want to sell it for $1,500 even. I can type it in. So very flexible on setting the pricing. As you're using Quoteworks, if you can't remember the difference between markup and points or margin, you can select the ellipsis button here and you can choose whether you just want to mark it up from the cost or set a specific margin. So maybe you need a minimum 15% margin on your hardware items. I can select margin points, hit OK, and that'll set the modifier for us. There's our updated price. And then one of the really cool features here is I can actually check real-time um, price history for this specific customer. So if I've ever sold this particular item to this customer, I can check price history and see what I sold it to them, the document date, the cost, the modifier I used, the customer price that they paid, the quantity, which vendor I sourced it from, all this information is available. So it makes it really easy to stay consistent with your pricing. Even if you have hundreds and hundreds of customers that you sell to, you can always stay consistent, make sure that you're always in kind of the same ballpark for what you're charging your customers. We can even check price history for anyone that we sold it to. So not just that specific customer, I can say maybe I gave someone a really good deal last week, I wanna give this customer the same deal, I can check what I marked it up, and what I charged them last week, and I can see that information here. And then this is where those heading lines, those section heading lines are uh, very useful on the sales side of things, is that as I'm building my document, I can say, okay, well this is a product, so let's put it under our product section and click add, and it'll appear under our product section there. You'll also see in the Edelize window here, we have some other tabs that are available. Uh, the Accessories tab will allow you to include optional add-ons. So if you have, um, maybe there's like a Cat5 cable that you want to include here, we can get our pricing and availability on the Cat5 cable, choose where we want to source it from. So for this instance, we'll source it from Tech Data since they have two in stock. And we'll go ahead and we'll add this as an optional item. And we'll say we need four of them also. Add that to our document. We can also filter by categories. So if we wanted to go to services, maybe there's a warranty that we want to include. Let's see, we'll give this customer a, let's see if they want the two-year extended warranty, which includes maintenance and labor. We'll get our pricing here. And we can also check pricing from CDW, Amazon, and Dell. So if your distributors aren't carrying that particular item, you'd also be able to check CDW, Amazon, and Dell and see if they have that pricing as well for those items. That also is the same on our main Edelize sourcing tab. If you wanted to check the pricing from those different vendors, you can actually see what they're selling it for. You can even click on the website link here and go straight to that, uh, their, that company's site to see the item, make sure it is in stock before you decide to source it from that particular vendor. Uh, similar items and upsell items. These items will be um, similar in functionality where the upsell items will essentially be uh, more functionality, but typically also going to be more expensive. So if you're doing like a good, better, best, uh, it's always a great, useful uh, tab to have. And then the spec sheets tab will include more technical information. So if we wanted to include all this technical info uh, for this particular customer, we could do that. Uh, and then you simply just need to choose add to links tab. Okay. So that's how you can pull items from your distributors. Now, if you are also maintaining your own product list, maybe you have a vendor list that you import into Quoteworks or your own list of services, we can easily support that. I'm just gonna click on my demo items database on the left-hand side here. And this will show me a list of all my vendors or all my items in this particular database. Uh, in this case, um, I only have 10 items in here. So if I wanted to add these items, I can simply go through and highlight them one at a time. I could hit shift and add a bunch of items at once as well. So it makes it really easy to choose which items that you want to include in your document. So for instance, if 
I want to add this item, which is a service, add it under service. Wanted to choose our these items here. You can add them under products and products. Uh, if you have any items that you want to set up with optional items, uh, you're able to do that. So you can actually link items together. So if you sell item A and item B needs to be sold with it, or is it an optional item, we can set that and support that as well. Uh, so if I wanted to include that, I could. I could simply just check the box to include the optional item. And then if you have anything that you want to add, maybe as an optional, we'll select those items here and we'll choose their optional, set as optional. And then we have a couple service charges that we want to include. All right. So now that we've added some items to the document, you can make any adjustments as needed. Uh, for instance, if you need to move things around. So this first item here, oh, we have a product item, um, but so we want to move it to our product section. I can simply drag and drop and add it to the product section. Uh, this installation charge, uh, this is in something that's going to be optional, it's going to be required. So I want to go ahead and move that installation charge up to the services section. So it makes it really easy to just kind of maneuver items around the document as needed. We can also make changes to multiple items at one time. So for instance, if these product items here, I wanted to change maybe the quantity. Instead of having to select each item and change the quantity, simply highlight your items and scroll down after you right click to apply quantity. And we'll set it to four and hit OK. And that'll adjust all uh, three of those items to with a quantity of four. Same thing if I wanted to do it with the services, we could, maybe we want to adjust our pricing. So instead of it being a margin of 50%, which is pretty good, uh, but maybe we'll change it to 70% instead and hit OK. And that'll adjust those highlighted items. So a lot of flexibility in being able to make changes to items. Uh, the descriptions for the items, all these columns that you see up top, these are all customizable. So you can actually change the terminology. So if you want to customize it to the terminology you use in your company, you can easily do that. If you want to reorder these columns, you can do that as well. This is just kind of like the default settings for most of uh, the installations. And then if I double click in the description, I can see the entire items description. So if I want to shorten the description and we'll just call it this and hit OK, I can shorten the description. It's just going to be for that item won't affect any other documents that this item might also be on. Um, additionally, items in QuoteWorks have what we refer to as line attributes. Uh, so line attributes are how we determine what type of line item it is. So for instance, we have our two optional items down here. So if I wanna mark these items as optional, I can do that by highlighting them, right click, choose edit line attributes, say, yes, they are optional, they are selected. And what this will do is give my customer the option to choose to include or not include them when we deliver this document to the customer. We also can change the tax code. So if it's taxable or non-taxable, if we want to hide the price, this is great if you sell items in groups or bundles. Uh, we do support bundles in QuoteWorks where you're, you can group items together and sell them as a package. So if you don't want to show the individual prices for your items, maybe you just want to run subtotals or you simply just want to say you buy the gold package and it's, you know, $1,500, you can do that without having to show, show them the line breakdown pricing for everything that they're purchasing. If you don't want to show quantities, uh, if you have um, items that are in a group and you don't want to show the individual line items, maybe you're just giving the customer kind of a brief overview saying, hey, this project's going to cost about $1,500. Instead of showing them each line item, everything that costs seven or $8, you can just hide it and say, you know, you're buying this package and it's this much. Um, and then if you have any items that have pictures associated with them, you can choose whether or not they're going to appear on the document. And then anything that's recurring, you can set it here. When you mark items as recurring, they will show up at the bottom here. So you can see how much it's going to be recurring and you can even break this out on the document for the customer. Let's go ahead and hit save. So on the save, this is where we're going to apply the document name. So we're going to use the company that we're selling to in today's date. Uh, the document number will keep track for you automatically. And the status, just like if you're using uh, like Autotask or ConnectWise or Salesforce, anything that has uh, opportunity support, the statuses and opportunities, statuses of your documents and quote works, and those will typically match your opportunity statuses as well. And then we can click OK, and that'll save our document. On the save is also where we would integrate with one of the CRMs. So if you are uh, using one of the supported CRMs, you'll also have a checkbox Basically, this window will expand further down and there'll be some checkboxes here where you can choose how you want to integrate with your CRM or PSA. 
So now that we've saved our document, we're ready to send it to the customer. So we're gonna click on the deliver window. This is where we'll choose what the output of the document's going to look like. So if I, maybe this is a new customer, so I wanna give them a little more information. I'm gonna to choose to include a cover page. Um, our layout, we wanna use our quote layout. And then we also wanna give them a solution summary page. And I'm actually select this one here and move this up. And literature documents would typically be documentation like uh, that doesn't really change. So more of your static documents. So if you have terms and conditions, warranty information, service contracts that you wanna include, you can apply that as literature documentation. The great thing about your literature documentation is that when it is included, it does support Quartworks macros, so it can fill in information like dates, company names, uh, pricing in the document, things like that. So you can actually have it be part of the document. And then when you're ready to send it out to the customer, we can click on preview. And this will preview our document. So in this case, we have an 11 page document and we can see our document name, who's prepared for, and our document number. Have just kind of like an introduction to the document for the customer to view. And then we get into our line item information where we have our line items here with a longer description for our products. And then also our services and optional items. And then we have a solution summary page where we kind of break out what's going to be the initial investment, what's going to be services and labor. If anything is going to be billed monthly, you're going to have $500 a month and then $1,500 quarterly as well. Um, and then we even get into our support agreement. So everything looks good. So we're ready to send this to the customer. So we're going to close out of here. We're going to choose upload to quote ballet. And once we upload this document to quote ballet, we'll be able to preview it so we can make sure everything looks good before we actually send the document to the customer. So we'll preview it and got into quote ballet so everything looks good. Then you would typically choose send email and you'll see here you have a link to the document but no attachment. So this is all we're sending the customer is the link. So if I open up this link, let me just close out of this window here. So if I open up this link, this is the email that the customer would see. This is the quote that they would receive. Uh, this is all customizable. So you can add your own company logo, change colors, fonts. There's a copy of the PDF. So if they do need a copy of the PDF, they can actually click on that and download the full copy of the PDF. Very important if it, incl if it includes terms and conditions that they need to be aware of. Uh, and then we can have our line item information. So we have our product information here, our services. And then one of the really great features about Quote Valley is it's an interactive document for the customer the customer can come in here and actually choose whether or not they want to update or include that option and QuoteWorks will actually update it in real time for you. Down here at the bottom you'll see what the subtotal is, the deposit required, and if anything's recurring, um, and then the payment options that are available. So we support seven different payment options where customer can pay by like credit card, uh, ACH, um, if you want to give them terms you can do that so it's up to you and they can choose how they want to make payment. And then down here is where the customer can actually sign off on the document so they can agree to the terms and conditions, sign off on it here. And then they can actually physically sign their name on this document and then click to accept. Uh, if they're not ready to accept and they have questions, they can actually post their comments here and this will send an email to you notifying you that they have posted a comment. Quartz also tracks every interaction with the document. So the first time they view the document, you'll actually receive an email notification that they viewed it. If they accept it, make payment, you'll receive email notifications for that as well. And if we do click to accept, let's select ACH here. This will bring us to the acceptance screen. If you don't accept online payment, that's fine. You could still use Quote Valley because the customer can still sign off on the document. They just won't see the pay now button. That'll be the only difference. If you do accept online payments or you want to be able to accept online payments, uh, then when you're brought to the payment screen, you'll actually see the payment options that are available to the customer. And they can select in this case ACH and they can put in their checking information. And then we'll track payment history. So if you only want to receive like partial payments or things like that, that'll be supported as well. And then if we go back into QuoteWorks, the next time you open this quote, Quote Valley will check for updates to see if this quote has been accepted. If it has been accepted, you'll get a notification that the document has been accepted. 
And then QuoteWorks will want to convert this quote to an order. This is how we basically close the quote as one in QuoteWorks. This will also prompt you to update your opportunity as one in your CRM or PSA. So that way your opportunities are always in sync with your quotes. So as your quotes are being accepted and paid for, we're updating your opportunities as one each time you view them in the document. We'll go ahead and click OK, update that. And then you can actually see all the steps here. So the customer viewed the document the first time, the PDF attachment, selected an option, accepted it, and viewed the payment request page. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, once, you've pu once you've converted the quote to an order, the document does become an order document, which means if you are using the like tech data, Ingram Micro, Cinex, DNH, you can process orders. So you can actually go to the purchasing window here and place orders for a specific vendor, actually place the online order. You can also have Quartz just create purchase orders, or at this point, if you wanted, uh, if you're going to do your ordering out of another system, you could have Quartz just send the document over to like QuickBooks or Stage 50 as an estimate, sales order, or invoice. If the items don't exist, we'll actually create the items for you, and if the customer doesn't exist, we'll actually create them for you as well. All right, so it looks like we've um, kind of covered everything that we needed to do. Uh, I'm going to go through and answer a couple questions. So if any of you have any additional questions, uh, now would be a great time to post them in the questions box. Uh, if you don't have questions and you don't are not going to stay to listen to the existing questions, uh, that's fine. And thank you for attending. Uh, like I said, if any of you have not gotten a chance to download the trial, I highly suggest you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and uh, we'll start answering some of these questions.